Good morning, everyone. My name is Sri, and uh, I will be your moderator this evening for today's webinar. So on behalf of Bureau, I would like you to welcome for yet again another webinar from the Bureau Insights series. Our topic for today is Packaging Innovation, a Rugged Road to Success. Our intention behind saying rugged is that you can achieve success, but it's not going to come easy, as our analysts will explain shortly. We have our presenters discussing the importance of innovation in consumer packaged goods industry in ways the process of innovation could be made more efficient. So before we go on to the actual topic in itself, so some basic set of instructions. To, to begin with, all of our attendees will be placed on mute for obvious reasons so that there's no echo of voices in between. Of course, if you want to post a question, you will see a window on your right side where you can type your question and hit the send button and I, your moderator, will be taking note of it as the presentation progresses. In the event that any question is relevant and it needs to be asked immediately, I would take a call on that. Now if you want, if you're experiencing any kind of uh, login issues, we suggest that you look into the confirmation email that came to your inbox from the go to webinar at citrixonline.com. So if you just clicked on this link, you should be able to log back in in case you experience any communication issues over the course of the presentation. However, if there are still other technicalities, we request you to email our marketing uh, staff. His name is Puneet and his email is mentioned here. So without further ado, let me go ahead and quickly introduce uh, the analyst. Our first presenter would be Malligeshwari, and she is a senior research analyst specializing in providing customized procurement intelligence to flexible and bulk packaging market participants. Essentially, her course of work has spanned across major FMCG companies, and she has also authored many white papers. A significant one that she recently did would be the changing scenario on the FIBC market dynamics and the evolving procurement changes. Her category also deals with uh, plastic films, aluminum foils, labels, and bulk packages. Our second presenter for this evening would be Joel. He is a lead analyst who is also a packaging expert at Bureau. He specializes in providing rigid and flexible packaging formats related to procurement intelligence for the top 10 to 20 Fortune 500 companies. He has built extensive knowledge and expertise in rigid and flexible packaging for end user markets such as pharmaceuticals and FMCG space in particular. And just like Malligeshwari, he's also authored a lot of thought leadership articles and a recent one that could be to your interest would be the rise of China in packaging equipments, metallization and new age packaging and energy containment in blow molding. So let me quickly pass it on to my analyst here, starting with Malligeshwari, who would speak on today's agenda on innovation in packaging. Over to you, Malligeshwari. Thank you, Sri. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on packaging innovation, a rugged road to success. I'm sure all of us would agree if I were to say that the road to innovation is a challenging one. As we all know, change is the only constant and it is pertinent in the CPG package world as well. Brands that consistently come up with innovative packaging formats, which are interactive, smart, functional, as well as convenient, would be better placed to face the competition in the long run. But the flip side to innovation is that it's not easy to pull off. How far are we successful in the innovation process? Is there a way to make this process more efficient? We would be addressing some of these key questions in today's webinar. We hope to also throw some light on ways in which one can efficiently manage the process of innovation. The agenda of this webinar is to identify the key operational challenges prevalent in the innovation process why a CPG company must innovate its package, and reasons why innovations often fail. 
We would also be exploring options to improve the innovation process by reducing lead time and cost. Before going into the innovation processes, let's look at what packaging means to the CPG world today. Why don't you join the discussion, Joel? Thank you. Packaging was initially meant only for containment, protection and preservation of goods. But in later years, packaging has increasingly focused on marketing aspects like visual appeal and also providing product information. Today, the definition of packaging is swiftly changing. Packaging is now a multifunctional entity providing product safety, child resistance, sustainability and on and on. I'm sure you would agree with me if I were to say that this age can be rightly called pack age. Now let me share with you the statistics. Only 11% of consumers are completely satisfied with their packaging today. Well, don't you think it's quite a disturbing number? Or this is what is keeping packaging companies on their toes to innovate and bring new packages. Let's not forget that 89% of consumers are not completely satisfied with their packages. Don't you think our innovation mechanism has to run faster and be more efficient? Let's take a closer look at the packaging innovation setup. Around 60% of packaging innovations today are but simple product extensions. On the other hand, a 15% constitute disruptive innovations that are completely new and breakthrough products in the market. And a 25% is a combination of both. Well, now you might wonder who is providing all these brilliant innovative ideas to the packaging industry. There are different stakeholders in the industry providing these innovation concepts. The largest segment comes from brand owners, open sources, and third-party consultants. Around 28% comes from packaging converters and 14 and 10 percentage from machine and raw material suppliers. What is interesting to note is that in spite of having all these multiple stakeholders in action, only one out of 20 conceptualized innovations successfully reached the market. If you hear it right, a 5% conversion rate which means that a significantly large amount of capital and time drained in unsuccessful innovation. A majority of these failures fall under the disruptive and combination segment. If the number of products that fail during the innovation process sounds gloomy, let us see if the 5% of successful innovations have a sunny side to it. Malikeshwari has some interesting statistics to present on this. Yes, Joel. The launch of any innovative packaging is challenging. Success rate is limited at each level and it is highly dependent on a multitude of internal and external factors. Out of all the innovations launched, less than 50% reach the market within the desired deadline. They are delayed at various stages such as design, prototyping, commercial manufacturing, etc. 45% is the success rate in meeting the initial sales target for an innovative product. And only 54% of the launches fall within the initially planned budget. The rest overshoots the initial cost estimate. It is evident that the low success rates are in some way connected to suppliers' performance. Supplier performances in terms of meeting the deadline and quality is at 48 here you can clearly see that over 50% of the innovative products hitting the market fail to meet the cost, lead time and sales target. This gap has to be addressed to make the innovation process more efficient. Now the question is, how do you address this gap? Well, I believe that the best way to bridge this gap is to identify the root causes of failure and also identify some opportunities to eliminate them. There are many reasons why new packaging innovations fail in the market. 
Companies invest a lot in packaging innovation and expect them to generate worthwhile returns. But then, how is it possible that so many packaging innovations still miss the mark? The first and foremost reason cited for failure is the difficulty in getting an accurate read on the consumer preferences. Around 27% of packaging innovations fail because there's an unclear understanding of what exactly the consumer is looking for. Having said that, procurement and operations have very little control over this. Let's look at some of the other factors. Failure in commercialization, late to market, product quality, and inventory shortages altogether account to a significant 34% of failures in product performance. A deeper analysis of these individual factors could help us understand that all these boil down to few of the operational downfalls, such as lack of planning, lack of flexibility, not engaging with the right suppliers, lack of process integration, and so on. All of these points fall within the premise of internal procurement and process management. Doesn't it look like an opportunity in hand that we are missing? 34% of innovations fail, even though they can be internally controlled. What if we can control this failure cost? What if we can indeed make this process better? This is an area that has to be jointly addressed by project management and procurement. To explore some of these opportunities, let's take a deeper look at the innovation process and see how it can be made, made more efficient. So what can be done in order to efficiently manage an innovative packaging product and increase the success rate? Well, let's take a look at the innovation process. The process, as we all know, begins with the conceptualization and design. The design then goes through the prototyping and testing phase, and once it is cleared or approved, goes to the commercial production. Our focus today is going to be only on the commercial production ramp-up stage. This area falls completely in the premise of procurement and operation. We will dwell deep and see how this step can be made more efficient. The production ramp-up starts with the identification and engagement with the right set of raw materials, converter and equipment suppliers. The product prototype is manufactured and then subjected to test runs. On the successful completion of the test run, the products are cleared for commercial production and the manufacturing takes place. Post-production, they are sent to various client locations and then finally launched into the market. Now the innovation cycle at this stage can take anywhere between 6 to 12 months, especially in case of technically complex innovation. The main concern today for most of the packaging innovation launches are lead time and cost. Let's see if there is an opportunity here which we can leverage. Consider the typical lead time distribution. Around 30% of the initial time is involved in identifying and engaging with the right supplier. Little over 50% of the time is consumed in test runs and production processes. Once the product is out of the manufacturing and will, it takes little or no time to hit the market. If you take a closer look at this distribution, it is evident that there are two key bottleneck areas. First, the supplier identification stage, and second, the test run and commercial production stage. These two segments are the opportune areas to make the process more efficient. Now, wouldn't it be more exciting if I were to say that these two segments are the major cost centers as well? Around 15% of the cost is incurred in the supplier identification and engagement process and around 60% in the testing and production. This cost can be controlled to a considerable extent if the process is made quicker and efficient among the individual stakeholders. Raw material suppliers, converters and machine makers are the major stakeholders in this supply chain. By easing the processes between these three players, and managing the test runs and productions efficiently, the lead time could be reduced by 30% and cost by up to 20%. So how could we efficiently manage these areas of opportunity? Here, 
I have put some pointers to be considered in the form of a triangle concept. All this starts off with identifying the appropriate set of raw materials, converters and equipment suppliers who have adequate capabilities. While selecting the right supplier is paramount, another key factor that helps in determining success is the early engagement with these suppliers. For the engagement to be successful, establishing a strong and transparent communication between all three stakeholders is necessary. By integrating all these factors together, the innovation supply chain can be managed efficiently, providing more scope for savings. So how do you think we can achieve this, Joy? I think the, the first step is to engage with the right supplier. If you might think that a successful packaging converter could be an equally good innovation partner, well, sometimes it may not be true. Hence, we need a different yard scale to identify the right supplier to provide innovative package. For a quick check while selecting the right supplier, I propose a CEPK way of filtering suppliers. CEPK stands for collaboration, experience, performance, and knowledge. The key differentiating factor to look for while identifying the right innovative supplier is collaboration. Collaborations can be at different levels from raw materials, machines, R&D, to even relationships with other packagers. An innovative supplier who is already in collaboration with the brand owner is an effective choice. In this case, the supplier understands the pulse and process within the brand. This also helps in synergy as there is an already existing communication channel between these two entities. Most of the groundbreaking innovative products also need a new equipment or a significant alteration to an existing machine. Hence, technological partnership of the supplier with an equipment maker is an added strength. The same goes well with raw materials as well. If you are not convinced of the importance of collaborations yet, why don't you come with me to take a look at this case example. Clorox in USA wanted to reinvent their dispensing closure for a better product delivery. To achieve this, they effectively used the collaboration model. Clorox brought together three of its incumbent suppliers, namely Alpla Verke, Graham Packaging Incorporated, Guala Pack, and they utilized their combined technical expertise to come up with an innovative smart tube technology. And this, in fact, helped them save 81,000 gallons of product wasted annually. The other key parameters to look for are experience, performance, and knowledge. Performance in terms of high production flexibility, ability to invest, quality consistency, and so on, and knowledge base of supplier in terms of internal technological capabilities understanding of regulations and testing procedures, etc. And to add, close proximity between the converter and brand owner would ensure better communication and cuts down time to market and also logistics and travel expenses. Having understood some of the key parameters to look for innovative suppliers, let's have a look at some of the suitable sourcing patterns in different circumstances. What we have here is a grid with lead time flexibilities along x-axis and the level of customization required along the y-axis. To begin with, let's consider a case of short lead time and low customization. In this case, engaging with existing supplier would be a suitable option. This might be ideal for product extension. Let's take an example here to make it more interesting. In a short span of time, PNG, along with its existing supplier, has reinvented its laundry packaging. This has now increased its product to package ratio by 27% and also decreased its CO2 emissions by 22%. Now, that's a huge number. Moving on. When high level of customization is required and time is not a constraint, one can consider engaging with a new and innovative supplier. The ideas for this type of innovation 
may come from either the internal R&D team or external agency. Here, there is ample time in hand to experiment with new technology and new suppliers. This is more relevant in new product launches. I'd like to quote the example of Easy Snap here, a product conceptualized by EasyPack, a packaging equipment company. This is a monodose sachet which can be opened using a single hand and ensures 99% delivery of product. The supplier had flexibility of time and it effectively used its R&D to develop a new product and a brand new machine to make this innovative package. On the other hand, let's take this case where the lead time is longer and the level of customization required is low. It would be better to engage with a new player or an already existing supplier in this case. Crowdsourcing is also an interesting approach that can be analyzed here for innovative ideas. I don't think there's a better example for this than the FIFA World Cup promotional packaging. Jusco Pevo has released beverage cans featuring its team and team members. This was done by using Dynamark Variable Technology of Ball Corporation, who is their current supplier. And finally, what we have in the fourth quadrant is the case where there is very little time to innovate and the level of customization required is high. In this case, it is better to go for integrated suppliers with high R&D capabilities. The best example here would be the premium and cosmetic products which require high levels of customization. While having engaged with the right supplier is the key, it is also important to engage with the supplier on time. I completely agree. Let's consider the typical innovation supply chain setup marked along a time scale. Here there are different timelines at which the individual stakeholders in the innovation supply chain come in. We can clearly see that all these individual teams come into picture at different points of time at different stages. But all of these individual stakeholders operate together only close to the final stage for a brief period of time during the testing. Some of the stakeholders having key roles in operational area like converters, equipment suppliers and production and supply chain teams, they get together, they, they get to work together only after the product conceptualization stage. The time they actually sit together and exchange ideas is very brief. Don't you think this hampers some of the synergy between the teams during the process? Well, on the other hand, what if the machine maker knew well in advance about the product concept in mind? and also has a say on how the package can be modified according to the equipment constraints. That's exactly the factor that is lacking in many of today's innovation processes. If all the teams can be brought to the table much ahead of time during the product conceptualization stage, the individual teams would have transparency and complete understanding of what the new package is all about. This would completely cut down a lot of lead times for finalizing the product prototype, time taken for supplier identification and engagement, and also would certainly limit the number of failures during the trial. Early engagement also has to be supported with a sound communication channel between these individual stakeholders. What do you think about this, Maligeshwari? Uh, I believe that Integration and transparency among suppliers are very important in the innovation process. In many cases, the commercial communication vehicles like mails and phones might not be very effective. On the other hand, it might be too early to have an established process control system like ERP, SAP, etc. Modern advancements in mobile communication and platforms including iPhones, iPads, Android tablets and phones can be employed to ensure communication and process transparency. Wait, why a mobile phone in a design floor? Should we even take these mobile apps too seriously? Are we looking too much ahead of time? Well, I had these questions myself. Mobile apps that run both in Android and iOS are being launched in the market that can assist communication and process control across different suppliers. To name a few, OmniFocus, Pack Manager, 
and lean kids. Establishing a continuous contact of this kind will provide a real-time update of each stage in the process. The converter would know at any point the progress of equipment maker and brand owner the status of all the other stakeholders. Having this transparency and understanding would eliminate many of the product timeline failures and also ensure that the ensuing product is same as the one that was conceptualized. Right. So to summarize, there are three core areas that are to be addressed for better success rates and innovation. Point one, engage with the right suppliers. Engage with the supplier who is well collaborated, experienced and knowledgeable about the testing processes and regulations. While engaging with the supplier, point two is engage early with the supplier. It is while it is important to engage with the right supplier, it is also important to engage with them at an early stage of innovation process. Bring in the stakeholders early in the process to eliminate differences in product understanding. Participation of key suppliers in conceptualizing the product and providing them ample time to fine tune their offering is very essential. Point three, build effective communication channels between the suppliers. Make use of today's simple technological advancements and tools that would enhance transparent communication across processes. These pointers, I'm sure, can make your innovation processes faster and efficient, thereby ensuring that your innovation reaches the consumers at the right time within the budgeted cost. Though the road to innovation is challenging, and has multiple roadblocks in the way, some of these pointers might help smoothen the rugged road to innovation success. Let us continue to innovate. Let us continue to take risks. Let's continue to make life easier through packaging in our CPG world. Thanks for your time and participation. Thank you very much, guys, again. Uh, so moving on to our questions time right now, we do have a couple of questions at this point. So Joel, I believe this is a question for you. You said that there are many last minute challenges in terms of acceptance by the marketing team, right? Something related to that. So the question is that, there are many last minute challenges in terms of acceptance by marketing teams and the product's compatibility just before the launch, right? <laughs> so one, one, one of our audience wants to know is how do I still manage my cost and lead times in such a situation without breaching the launch date? I believe we need to go to that slide where you said lead times can reduce by 30%. Yes. Right? Let's go to that slide first. Right. Uh, this is, in fact, a bit of a tricky question. And um, I completely agree that, you know, uh, the innovation team gets a lot of last minute, you know, challenges from the marketing team, from the, the formulation team, and also, the, of course, the pressure of the product launch date is always there. Uh, but I think this, uh, we should take this question in a case basis. Uh, for example, are the innovation team's reaction to uh, the different types of challenges uh, is what matters. Uh, for example, let's take a simple case where, uh, where the scientists come in the last minute or maybe uh, two, three months before the final product la launch and they bring up a case that the formulation of the product is not compatible with the package that we are designing. So this is a, a critical problem where the product uh, properties, the product shelf life is going to be affected, which is in fact directly going to affect the consumer. In this case, uh, there is little that can be done. So um, there has to, the, the deadline might have to be pushed 
and new package has to be sourced. Maybe there's an uh, additional raw material that has to be procured for that at an extra cost. And uh, of course, here you can't help uh, maintaining the deadline or maintaining the cost here. But let's assume another case where the marketing team comes with a, a concern that the product feel is not satisfactory or the product shape needs a bit of alteration. But this is not directly affecting the product and this can be considered a bit, uh, a bit of a flexible area where we can leverage. So uh, in this case, what we can do is we can stick to the launch date. We can definitely launch the product, but the innovation team can continuously work on it and keep improvising on the product at different stages. Maybe uh, the key cost for a bottle, let's take a bottle example here, uh, for a bottle is the mold cost. So once the mold cost is recovered during the initial sales, then we can definitely sit together um, with the uh, package development team, develop a new design that is pleasing the marketing team and then we can launch the next stage and I've also seen in the industry uh, of these product developments uh, improvisations happening for over two years from the date of launch so I think uh, this would be the answer to you but I, I would definitely refer this slide to you that is uh, the early engagement that we mentioned The best way to overcome all this is bring in all these stakeholders early in the process right from package development and eliminate any of these product understanding differences or product uh, compatibility differences by making all these teams sit together right from the beginning of package development process. Hope this answers you. So essentially what you're saying is early bird gets to them, it's always good to plan yeah. early. <laughs> okay. So, okay, moving on to our next question. I think Malageshri, this is a question for you, something you can answer. Okay. Uh, one of our audience wants to know, what is the ideal budget, say, for a new packaging development and launch process? I think it's best to illustrate this with an example. Yeah. So, go ahead. Uh, thanks, Sri. That's actually a very interesting uh, question. So uh, I feel that, uh, uh, you know, the budget may uh, vary from project to project uh, uh, depending on the level of customization required. Uh, frankly speaking, we can't put a specific number to it uh, unless we know the entire project uh, details. But um, based on our experience uh, from the projects that we have seen over the past few years, uh, we have seen that uh, the project budget ranges somewhere between, uh, you know, maybe starts at around 50,000 USD and uh, it can uh, extend up to uh, 300,000 USD when it's a very complex innovative product and uh, I think recently we came across a project wherein the budget was uh, somewhere around uh, 275,000 USD so uh, that was an interesting uh, fact to know here and uh, this also goes in line with the lead time so uh, it might take somewhere between uh, 6 to 12 months uh, for the product to you know, come to the product launch stage. And uh, in special cases, it can go up to maybe 24 months uh, based on the level of complexity of the product. So uh, as I mentioned, so it can range anywhere, the budget for an innovative product can range anywhere between uh, 50,000 to maybe uh, 300,000 US. So hope that answered your question. Thanks, Maligeshwari. I think we those are the two questions we had. So, and uh, since I see no more questions, uh, again, we hope you enjoyed our uh, webinar presentation. We hope to see you back soon. So thanks again for your participation this evening, and uh, we hope that you all have a great day. Thank you.